Hello, Ron Pinkerton here again. This is the fourth in a series of eight videos about upgrading Oracle SOA Suite to version 12C. If you haven't yet seen the first three videos, start at the beginning and view the sequence in order. If you've already seen them, welcome back. You're in the right place. We've taken care to verify our pre-upgrade requirements have been met, including making sure our operating system, JDK, and Oracle database are certified to work with 12C. We've installed the version 12C software in a new Oracle home directory. Now, in this video, we're going to stop our 11G servers and other processes and create the new schemas required for version 12.1.3. The repository creation utility, or RCU, is used to create and manage Fusion middleware database schemas. Before creating a schema, RCU performs prerequisite checks to ensure that certain minimum requirements are met. The schemas are created. The required table spaces and data files are also created. RCU also maintains a database table named Schema Version Registry that maps the schemas and their related prefixes. We'll see each of these things as we demonstrate using the RCU to create database schemas for our 12C installation. Before we run the RCU, we need to shut down the managed servers. The node managers, the administration server, and system components such as OHS that may be using the schemas we want to upgrade. We also need to be absolutely sure that no other components or users are operating on the same database instance that will be accessed by the repository creation utility. There are multiple ways to do this, including using Enterprise Manager, PL SQL, or other tools. In our demo environment, the easiest way to do this is to stop and restart the database and listener. Once the database is restarted, we're ready to run the RCU. To run the RCU, we'll log into the host and open a terminal window. We'll navigate to Oracle Home, Oracle Common, bin. Notice that's the new Oracle Home that was established when we installed the 12C software. From there, we'll invoke the repository creation utility. We've got our command line prepared. We press Enter to invoke the RCU. The welcome screen appears when the RCU is started. The navigation pane on the left summarizes the tasks that RCU will help us complete. Each item in the navigation pane represents a specific screen that will prompt us for information required to create our schemas. As we run the RCU, the list will change in response to the options we select. If you have the necessary permission and privileges to perform DBA activities on your database, Select System Load and Product Load on the Create Repository screen. If you don't have the necessary permission or privileges to perform those activities, select Prepare Scripts for System Load instead. That option will generate a SQL script, which can be provided to your database administrator. In this demo, we have the necessary privileges, so we're going to accept the default option, System Load and Product Load. On the Database Connection Details screen, we provide the information the RCU will need to connect to our database. We start with the host name. We provide the port number, the service name, the username, that's any user with DBA or SysDBA privileges, and that user's password. Double check our typing and select Next to proceed. We see that our prerequisites have been checked. We click OK to continue. On the Select Component screen, we're asked whether to use an existing prefix or to create a new prefix for our schema. For our sample installation, we're going to use the existing prefix dev. The prefix in your production environment is probably going to be different. For more information, refer to the documentation title, Creating Schemas with the Repository Creation Utility. In the Components section, we select the new schemas to be created for 12C. Based on our topology and installed software, we're going to select the available Audit Services options. Again, prerequisites are checked. We click OK. 
On the Schema Passwords screen, we specify how we want to set the schema passwords on our database. In this video, we're going to use the same password for all schemas, so we provide that password, and then we confirm by providing it again. Click Next to proceed. The Map Table Spaces screen shows the default and temporary table spaces that will be created for the components we selected earlier. The Manage Table Spaces button provides access to options that will allow you to create or modify table spaces. We're going to accept the defaults and continue. The Confirmation dialog advises us that any table spaces that don't already exist will be created. We click OK to confirm we want to continue. With that, the Create Table Spaces dialog box tells us the table spaces have been created. The Summary screen shows all the input we've provided. We review that input for accuracy and then click Create to continue. Next we see the Completion Summary screen, which reports the actions that have been taken. Note the access to the RCU and other log files. We can access these log files to debug any issues we encounter or to verify logged confirmation of success. When we're done, we click Close to dismiss the RCU. And we're returned to our command line. Earlier in this video, we said that the RCU maintains the mapping between the schemas and prefixes in the Schema Version Registry table. We can use the SQL query on screen to view the version, status, and upgrade state of each schema record in that table. We can examine the results to verify the successful creation of the new schemas. And as we'll see in the next video, this list of schemas and their versions will also be useful when we use the Upgrade Assistant to upgrade our existing schemas. Here are the schemas in our sample database. First, we see our newly created 1213 schemas, their versions, and their status. This confirms that the RCU was successful. We see our 11G schemas and their information as well. In the next video, we'll be upgrading these schemas to 12.1.3. Your list of schemas may be similar, but it probably won't be identical to this. It'll vary depending on which components you have installed and their current versions. The Oracle documentation, Upgrading with the Upgrade Assistant, includes a list of schemas that are available for upgrade and instructions on how to interpret the results to determine if your version of each schema is supported for upgrade. For this demo, We'll set this information aside until our next upgrade task. That concludes our conversation on creating database schemas for 12C. In our next video, we'll use the Upgrade Assistant to upgrade our current schemas and our active instance data. Until then, I'm Ron Pinkerton. Thanks for your time and attention.